Welcome back. Today we will show you how to make a polariscope, a simple yet powerful tool that lets you see the hidden stresses in transparent materials. You may have seen polariscopes used by material scientists, engineers, and jewelers, but did you know you can make your own with a few household items? In this video we'll do a step-by-step -step guide walkthrough on how to make your own polariscope and show you how it's used to reveal the hidden fascinating world of internal stresses in everyday objects like plastics and glass. Get ready to discover a whole new dimension of the world around you, so sit back, relax, and let's get started. Welcome to Wheeler Scientific, and in today's video, we are observing the hidden world of stresses. Before we make a polariscope, what even is it? A polariscope is a device that helps view internal stresses in transparent materials, such as plastics, resins, and glasses. Polariscope uses polarized light, which polarized light is where it gets the name polariscope. To understand how a polarized scope works, you first must know that light is weird. Polarized light is a type of light in which vibrations of electromagnetic waves are restricted to one direction, or plane, rather than oscillating perpendicular or in any direction from propagation. It is produced by passing unpolarized light through a polarizing filter, which only allows light oscillating in one specific orientation to pass through. Polarizing film is a thin sheet of material that filters out light waves that oscillate in a certain direction while allowing light waves that oscillate in other directions to pass through. The result is only allowing light waves that are polarized in a specific orientation to pass through, while blocking or reducing the intensity of waves that are in other polarization orientations. The polarizing film uses a specific coating containing long, thin molecules orientated in one specific direction. When light passes through the film, the molecules in the coating absorb and reflect the waves that are in polarized direction perpendicular to the orientation, while in light that is polarized in the same direction to pass through. The process of filtering out specific polarization of lights is useful in many applications, such as producing glare in reflective surfaces, enchanting contrast in LCDs, and improving clarity in photographs. The polarizing film can be used standalone sheets or incorporated into other materials such as sunglasses, camera lens, and LCDs. If now that we have our polarized light, and only light in one state, and take a filter and put it 90 degrees to the original, we see no light gets through due to the blocking effect of light being in only one waveform polarization form. We experience polarized light throughout our day, and you are most likely looking at polarized light right now. Liquid crystal displays, LCDs, used the same in our phones and computers, use polarizing film to produce the image being displayed. With a bit of science of light out of the way, let's now make a polariscope. To make a polariscope, we have two filters in series. Then we can see the stress in the materials that we place between them. The ability to see stress is because materials that are typically not doubly refractive become so when stressed. The double refractive creates light bands in the materials showing where the stress is. You can also use an LCD as a starting polarizing film and display a blank screen. The light coming from the screen is measured and polarized, therefore it can be used in your polariscope and use that as your first filter. Glass blowers use polariscopes to detect stress in their glasswork. When glass is heated and then rapidly cooled, it creates stress in the glass. The glass could shatter if not detected and dealt with. Using a polariscope, the glass blower can detect stress and then use it and adjust the techniques to reduce the stress in the glass through annealing or other processes. Chemists also use polariscopes in their work. They use them to study the structures of molecules as well to determine purity of the sample. When a sample is placed between polarizing filters, the direction of the polarizing will change depending on the structure of the sample. By analyzing the patterns seen through the polarized filters, chemists can determine the purity of a sample and gain insight into the structure of the molecule. Now with our brand new polariscope, let's take a look at some interesting stresses. I've shown in a previous video on how to cut glass in different ways. Cutting glass involves inducing stress in the glass, which is a weak point that can be exploited to break the glass. First, let's score the glass, and now let's add a little heated glass rod to it and do a break off. We can see that when we touch the hot glass to it, it stresses it and grows in throughout the material. That's that white band that's forming. 
This creates the weak point, which then allows the glass to be broken quite easily. Another example of visualizing stress in the same way is we can heat up a nice rod of glass and then touch it onto a beaker. This way we can see the stress grow a little bit in an interesting way. We see the stress grows out from the point of contact throughout the glass. The interesting thing about borosilicate glass, the glass used in lab wear, is that it's quite thermally resistant. So if this was done to a normal piece of glass such as a soda lime bottle, it could cause it to break and fracture. But because of the crystalline structure of borosilica glass, it can handle the stress quite easily, which is why it's so used in the chemistry community and in many scientific glassware. Previous video, I made high pressure chlorine ampules and I sealed them in a resin container. You can see that the resin holds stress around the ampule due to how it's solidified, which is a very interesting color, and you can see the stresses form a cool looking pattern in it. A famous example of stress in glassware is a Prince Rupert drop, which the whole reason why a Prince Rupert drop works is because of stress. A Prince Rupert Drops works off of the fact that the outside is rapidly cooled in water, while the inside stays molten for longer. The cooling of the outside then causes the dish to contract inward as it cools, putting stress on the glass. This stress allows the Prince Rupert Drop to be so strong, being able to supply hammer blows and many other sharp impacts. But of course, the Prince Rupert Drop has a drawback. As soon as its fragile little tail is broken, the stress is rapidly released and the glass shatters. Most plastics contain stresses because of the manufacturing process, allowing the crystal structure not to cool properly. And the glasses that I use for glass blowing actually have a lot of stress in them. So taking a look through those in the polariscope, we see that the plastic has stresses, which are the colored bands we see. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again. If you liked the video, drop a like. If you have any comments or questions, post those in the comments section below. If you'd like to join a Discord server with a bunch of like-minded individuals, check out the links in the description. I have a lot of random resources down there. And I hope to see you again. I have a lot of fancy videos coming up that I love to get out. And see you next time. I don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. I sold my cad, I bought me a Jeep, I got that bug and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all.